What? Uh, Angela has something to sell you. I mean, tell you. <laughs> Hit it, Angela. Tony, I don't think it would be such a terrible thing if Sam took a modeling job. What? Now, Tony, I told no. Sam how you felt, and she understands your concerns. Perfectly. But there's nothing to be concerned about. She's going to be modeling sports equipment, ski oh, wear. She'll be covered from head to toe. Parka's up to here. What <laughs> more do you want? Yeah, Dad, it would give me a chance to make my own money, and it would just be a one-time thing. Please, please, come, come on, on, Tony. Don't really, one time, time you one time I won't be oh. in. I'll have to think about it. Did you hear that? He said he's going to think about it. That means you got it. It means... I'll think about it. Of course, he didn't mean anything. It's okay. okay. You. You, you got, got it. it. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> I'm only going to use uh, clips now that have a little music intro. Uh -huh. for I like it. I like it. I was moving over here. <laughs> Welcome back to AO. Oh, hey. The Who's the Boss podcast. I'm Tori. I'm Kevin. I don't think anything will ever top our last AO away. Which no, is no. The, the tiny tamales. Yeah, yeah I know. <laughs> Very Tony. We are here to rewatch and discuss every single episode of Who's the Boss. Today we're going to cover season four, episode 20. The title is Model Daughter. It first aired on Tuesday, March 22nd, 1988. And the TV Guide summary says, Sam's modeling is tough on Tony, who sees his daughter becoming financially independent. Yeah, you're not, you don't get a lot there at all. No, that's... I mean, it's not wrong, no, but no, it's... No, no, no. Well, bones. let's... Uh, oh, yes, please. Let's dig in here, because yeah, I'm it. sure we're going to get a lot here. To pay off her debt, Samantha convinces Tony against his better judgment to allow her to take a modeling job at Angela's advertisement agency. Soon, she becomes a successful model with a higher salary than her own father. <laughs> that's one. Okay. And here's the other one. Tony Tony expected to talk Sam out of a out of more extravagant clothes expenses by claiming she can't spend more than she earns. But when she gets a shot at applying for an advertisement campaign Angela produces, she enjoys it and earns more than Tony, who despairs how to make college still seem attractive. However, the competitive reality of the fashion world catches up. I don't... I don't remember anything about college. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Maybe it got cut out. Maybe, yes. Oh, yeah, that's true. Could have been in the original broadcast I one. have no idea, but I don't remember that Or if that these are being translated from another language, it could be on the copy that's still being circulated, true. syndicated in their country. Nevertheless. Well, this episode was written by Danny Callis. Mm. And this is... It's a name that we haven't heard before, but this is the first episode of 13 episodes. Yeah, he wrote... Wow. Is that the most? No. Anyone? Oh, okay. I don't think so. It can't but he be. will be with the show now until its end. Because wow. Savor right. the Veal Part 1, 2, and 3, he has a written by credit, and that is the series finale. All right. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. Now, when this episode starts... What they didn't cover in either my synopsis nor yours is that we get one of the dirtiest jokes I, ever here. No kidding. I was going to wait to bring that up because <laughs> my lead in or to that point was going to be I thought that the um, tamales joke was the dirtiest <laughs> thing I'd ever hear on yeah. Who's the Boss, but this takes the cake. Yeah, this okay. is the filthiest thing I've heard on Who's the Boss, I think. Uh, yeah. Or okay. innuendo wise. Yes. I don't know. All right. So let's let's set it up here. So Tony is in the kitchen doing his taxes and Mona comes in and he says, Oh Mona, you're I'm doing your taxes and you're just in no, time. I'm doing my taxes. I'm doing, doing my taxes. taxes. <laughs> That's true. I'm surprised. You know what? Probably next he has to do her taxes. I know. He probably does. <laughs> you're probably right. I'm doing my taxes and you're here just in time for the exciting climax. Mm. Why? Would, but why would you say that? I don't know. To Mona. Right. The reveal. Exciting reveal. I know. See, the thing that disappoints me about this is that it is the dirtiest joke we'll ever get on Who's the Boss. And it's wasted on Tony and Mona instead of Tony and Angela. <laughs> yeah, but Angela probably wouldn't even. That's yeah, true. She wouldn't. She have wouldn't even. <laughs> I mean, we did get the TNA joke out of Angela though that one time. That's true. Which was pretty dirty. But Mona sits show. down. She's interested now. Yes. So she sits down with this dreamy look on her face, and she just starts watching as he presses a button on a very old 
what was that? Those were yeah. Like, it's I mean, not it's a, a calc- calculator. Well, it, it was is a, a calculator, but it prints out. Yeah, but they had a different word, a yes. different name. Oh, we should have looked that up pause. before we. Hang on. We didn't know that. <laughs> we're, we're we're back, and we should have oh. known it because uh, the title is exactly what it is. It's, it's an, an adding, adding machine. machine. But we yes. discovered it right when you stopped the recording. <laughs> yes, I remember my parents having one of those at the. My parents used to own a Carvel ice cream store. Oh yeah, the adding machine they, was probably important. Yeah, did they have the ribbon in there and everything? Oh yeah, yeah. Paper or mm-hmm. whatever. Okay. Until I probably ruined it somehow. I would, yeah. I would play with it and probably yeah, messed sure. it up. Okay, so he goes, here goes, and he and it's making a bunch of beep, 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 beep. I know. I don't think I've ever heard a beeping adding machine. No, me either. It was more like a chugging along as it would print out on their paper. And he says, Mona, I'm getting a refund of $8,600. And Mona's like, oh, that was satisfying. What, or Is that what she's... She's like, that was so good. That, that was so good. Because it's the climax. <laughs> And I was, I, I mean, at first I was impressed. I'm like, gosh, what did Tony do in his taxes? What did he finagle right, yeah, to I get eighty six hundred dollars? We, as we discussed in the episode prior to this one, eighty six hundred dollars would be about half of Tony's salary. <laughs> it would so, be, but we do learn. Yes. Other things so he's about excited. A refund of eighty six hundred dollars. What a great country! What then he looks country. down again at the adding machine. He's like. Oh, wait. No, no, I'm sorry. Make that $860. Okay, well, that makes more sense. But still a good country. And I could see Tony getting a refund of that. That sounds more accurate because, right. you know, he doesn't make a lot of money. I know, and, probably and has... Angela should have paid him in cash. That way he wouldn't have to claim it. Oh, yeah, that's a good point. Although he probably wouldn't do that because it's not... That's true. It's not, not on the up and up. It's got to hmm. give the government some money, too. Aunt, uh, Mona's like, yeah, that's great. So she gets up, and Samantha comes into the kitchen right then. And she says, Dad, is there anything that I can help you with around the house? So you know immediately what that means. Yep. Yeah, she spent money she didn't have. Yep. And he's like, what did you do? And she said, I bought some new boots. How much were they? And uh, sh- she's like, well, they're, you know, they're, he says they look like they are Italian leather. And she's like, let's not worry about how much they were. They were on sale, and he just keeps asking her how much they were. They were a really good deal, and he just keeps asking her how much they were. I know. And she says they were $90. And he's like, $90? And then Mona says, that's actually a pretty good deal. Where did you get them? No, no help at all. No, not at all. But $90 in 19, I mean... That's oh, a lot. Yeah, I don't think it's a lot for... I should have looked that up, I think too. it's a lot for boots now. Ye- I'm probably old well yeah okay so i mean leather boots is probably not a lot i'm, I'm just saying like wow 90 dollars. that's probably got to be like a hundred and like fifty dollars now right yeah i think or am 90 I way would probably no i think you're right probably like i hear i have my little calculator i'm just completely is it an adding machine it is um and the final okay, answer I gotta change is this to 1988 carry the one <laughs> I'm not carrying anything. It's oh, going to do it for me. $90, uh, 1988 to 2021, $203. Jeez, that was pricey pair of boots. Yeah, those yeah, were pretty pricey. Too. Okay. So Mona had asked, where did you get them? And Tony says, who cares where she got them? How did you pay for them? Right. And she says, I used the credit card you gave me. And even Mona looks a little shocked at that. <laughs> <laughs> and That's Tony right. says that credit card was for emergencies only. And mm. she says, well, it was the last pair they had. And there was fighting and biting and all sort of tugging and pulling. Wow. Yeah, so that is what she considered an emergency. And Mona does stand up for her. She says, you did the only thing you could do, dear. And Tony wants her out of there. I know, it's just no help. Not, no help at all. Not a role she model. She comes in with her dirty jokes, and now she's just causing Tony more problems. Yeah. And he probably has to do her taxes after this. I mean, you really think about Mona in this house, and it's more (laughs) not help than it is help. (laughs) It really is. She comes and eats all your food, (laughs) has no solutions for any problems. I mean, most, sometimes. sometimes. Although I picked her to be the, she was the boss in the last episode. But whatever. (laughs) But I mean, and then she's bumming off a, she does your shopping and the grocery shopping. Yeah, steals food. Barely helps Angela and Angela still pays her. <laughs> Poor Angela. Uh, right, Tony says, I'd love to buy you a new pair of boots, but it is just not in the budget. Uh, Samantha says, I'll pay you back. You can take it out of my allowance. We've heard that before. Yeah, we have. And so has Tony. He says, That's what you always say. 
you're already paying me back for the Sting concert ticket and the stereo headphones. The stereo headphones. Yes. <laughs> Moving on up from her uh, mono, oh, mono headphones. headphones. Yeah. Uh, he, and, and her ski trip she's paying him back for, too. Oh, that probably wasn't cheap. No, that had to have been Oh, yeah. $300? She's got a long way to go. Yeah. Well, she I should mean, have paid all that off. She's not going to get anywhere with this allowance that yeah, she's getting because I think it's true. $15 a week. She says, you know what? I'm in so deep. What's one more? But Tony's like, no. I live within a budget, which means that you, you. live in a, within a budget. That's right. Everybody lives in within, within a budget, except for the government. That's right. <laughs> that is true. And Mona says, and me, which is also true. See, again. Tony says to her, what kind of role model are you? She says, one that any shallow, materialistic person would love to look up to. <laughs> Okay. And then she goes into the refrigerator. Right. And she takes something? I pr- I probably. Sam says, Dad, look. Yeah, it's- she's stealing food. <laughs> After that. <laughs> she's just, and it was like a bag of something. Nice. I, I didn't notice that when I watched the episode. It's hilarious. <laughs> Sam says, Dad, you don't understand. It's different since you were a kid in the 50s. And then Tony's like, in the 60s. Yeah, right. But I was trying to do that math, and he was a kid in the 50s, but he's comparing himself to Samantha's age, and he Which would have been in the, in the 60s. Yeah, okay. Yeah. She's like, whatever, whatever people liked Wayne Newton. No, oh, Wayne <laughs> Newton. Um, I, had a th- I had something to say here that I can't... Oh, okay, that's what I was going to say. My Our kids are really into this website called Sheen. Which just has like a bunch of cute clothes that are cheaply made and very inexpensive. And it made me think like when we, the 80s, it was all about labels. Uh So it was a very different time than it is now. It was. It was guest jeans and Benetton this. And so it was very like an esprit. And if you didn't have that kind of stuff, then you were sort of looked down upon. Yeah, yeah. I remember being so excited when I got my first pair of guest, I think my only pair of guest jeans. I yeah, had one. it was guest jeans. I remember that. And then as I got into high school, it was Z Cavarici. Right. So the 80s kind of were stuff. way more about labels than they well, are today. Was early 90s, but still, well, late 80s. Like today, kids will wear whatever. They don't really, I mean, a little bit with the shoes, like having Nike shoes or Vans or whatever. But yeah, for the most but... part, my daughter's looking, our kids are looking for the cheapest clothes at H&M H&M and M and Forever 21, and yeah, they don't care. Okay. I bet you see, um, you see Samantha and some Z Cavaricis at some point. I think we already have. The have ones we? that um, I, I folded remember. down at the top. Like yeah, the they fold down and the top was like kind of puffy and the leg, bottom part of the legs were tight. Yeah. That was Z Cavarici. Okay. So, I wore those. Yeah, Not that anybody cares. There is Moan in the background just rummaging around. I know. She's got, now she's got bags of food. <laughs> and Tony says, look, a day is going to come when you have your own money. And then when that day happens, you can spend it however you want. But until then, you are going to live within your means. And your means are my means. You know what that means? <laughs> He's channeling um, Danny DeVito here to me. Did yeah, you notice that? Not really. Yeah, if you kind of like watch how he delivers that your means are my means, you know what that means. It seems very Danny devito Oh, to interesting. Me, which no, would make sense because they worked together for quite a while. And that means... No boots. So she's like, all right, I'll take them back. I'm going to make some other size six very happy. Mm, Size six. She leaves. Again, sitcom kid versus real kid. Right, exactly. I'll take them back. No, instead, there would have been tears. There would have been, you hate me. I hate you. Right. We we all hate each other. (laughs) I'm going to go up to my room and cry. He's the worst. I have the worst parents. Yeah. Worst dad. (laughs) So as he leaves, Mona's holding, I mean, as Samantha uh, leaves, leaves, Mona's holding carrots and celery, right. like still in the bag. She's going to make a juice? <laughs> and she, she says to Tony, you're going to buy them for her, aren't you? And he's like, no, I'm not one of those overindulgent parents. He says, I'm going to raise her allowance. Mm. And then he's like, you know, I am getting 860 bucks back from the government. Then he looks back down at the adding machine and he's like, Oh, oh no. Oh no. Oh, I'm getting eight dollars and sixty cents. I had a feeling it was coming. <laughs> but that seems low. I feel like Tony would have gotten more back he if he was gotten. paying. Okay, hang on. Wow, he's really going to town on that bell. <laughs> okay, we're back. 
Um, this is the first time of, you've ever listened to us. I was about to say, for yeah. those of you uh, new listeners, our maybe, dog maybe, rings a bell when yes. he wants to go outside. Yeah, may, may, I mean, maybe, maybe we would have a new listener. Maybe, maybe. but he likes to ring a bell. And, yes, and that's, or we've trained him to ring a bell yeah, when yeah. He, when it's time to go outside. And, and he likes to do it while we're was. podcasting, whether yeah. he needs to go outside or not. Right. Okay, so now in the next scene, Samantha's on the phone at that little writing desk at the bottom of the stairs, and she oh. has the want ads out. Oh, Which, I don't have this. Okay. Oh, you don't? No, it goes oh, right to this. Oh, interesting. Okay. Yeah. So, yes, years ago, we used to have to look in the newspaper to find a job. <laughs> so she's going through the want ads and calling. Uh, she says, what exactly does an usher do? And she's like, oh, I have to stop kids from theater hopping? Oh, let's say, in a movie theater. Yes, right. in a movie theater. And then she says, even my friends? And then, yeah, hello? Yeah, well, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and they've hung up on her. <laughs> So she looks over at Angela, who has like a sympathetic look on her face, to, to Samantha, and she hangs up the phone. Angela's sitting at the coffee table with a bunch of headshots spread out in front of her. Ah, yeah, And no. Jonathan walks in. Now, is this where yours yes, picks up? Yeah. Yes. And Jonathan uh, says, uh, asks her, what are you doing, Mom? And he, she says, I'm casting models for an ad. Jonathan sees one of the headshots, and he's like, oh, I give her a seven. Mm-hmm. Then he sees the bikini, the bathing suit right. shot of her and says, oh, never mind. She's a 10. What's her name? Mm. I'm in love. Oh, boy. Yes. And Angela's like, don't you have a lizard to feed? I know. And then he says, I don't, I'm getting tired of cold-blooded creatures. Yeah, yeah. I'm getting tired of cold-blooded Which creatures. Which means he wants warm-blooded yeah. women. <laughs> then he sees another picture and he says, oh, she's a real dog. Oh. Yeah, this is something you wouldn't see today. No. Samantha's outfit is cute. So Samantha says, Jonathan, that is sexist and demeaning, and you should not talk about women that way. Then she sees the picture and says, oh, woof, woof. Ah, terrible. It gets worse somehow. I know. But it's like, I guess back then nobody would have said like, hey, I don't really think that's a cool joke to me. No. (laughs) Because it was just completely accepted. Yeah. Yeah, it was. Not a problem at all. Samantha asks, Angela, what is the account for? And she says, it's for a sporting goods company. We're going to be doing some print ads. Then she's like, oh, well, I mean, how much do these girls make? And Angela says, oh, about $125 an hour. Wow. And she's like, an hour? Then she's trying to add up how many pairs of boots that is. <laughs> One and a half pairs of boots an hour. So she says, Angela, do you think that I could be a model? Jonathan says, yeah, if you wore a ski mask. Ah. No, so Not mean. nice. Although she's mean to him too, so. <laughs> so they both kind of glare at him, and he's like, "Oh, maybe, I, maybe I should leave." So he gets up and, <laughs> and goes to do something else. After Jonathan leaves, Samantha asks Angela again, like, "You know, what do you think? Is this something that I could do?" And Angela says, "All right. Well, now that you mention it, your father and I have already talked about this before." And I like for the not. I don't know for the first time, but one of the few times it sounds like they're actual parents i know yeah mm-hmm. this your is, father and i have talked about right this. yes like and yes sam says you did and, she, and angela says yes and we decided right that modeling wasn't such a great idea so yeah it really does sound like you know her parents discussing something well then even more like when she says well your father decides right you know yeah I mean? like, <laughs> right because he is the yeah. ultimate right but angela was not opposed to it Right, yeah. It seems like Angela thought it wouldn't be a terrible idea, and he was like, no. No way. And she says, well, you know, really more your father than me. And Angela says, you know, I think it would be harmless, but, you know, your father, he gets worried. He just thinks that modeling is going to be all men and money and high and big parties. Right. Cut to Mona. Yes. So now Mona's coming up from the basement holding a laundry basket. There is no way she folded those clothes. No, she picked up some from where Tony folded them. Right, right? Tony so I'm guessing Tony there. draws the line at actually going to Mona's place and putting her clothes away. So right. she's got to do that herself. <laughs> so yeah, so she says it's all money, men, and uh, big parties. And Mona says, yes, and there's downsides too, or disadvantages too. I know, which is funny. Very know, Mona. Of course. Angela says, in fact, there are disadvantages she says, you know, a model can be over the hill by the time she's 19. What? <laughs> what? I, I mean, modeling does sound awful. But I know, but just 19? Yeah, yeah. It's funny. 
And, and and I feel like even back in the eighties, it was probably even worse. Than I guess it is so. Now. Yeah, right. It's still, That's probably true. not great. Um, probably it was terrible in the eighties. But sure. Samantha says, you know, we're not talking about a career. Like I just want to do this for now, like a one-time thing. Yes. And Mona says she thinks it's a great idea, and Sam's telling her, Angela, listen to your mother, which is funny. Yeah. So she's like, it's not me, it's your father. But Sam's like, you know what? You're a high-powered ad exec. You sell things for a living, so sell him. <laughs> <laughs> and it almost sounds like she means like get rid of him right <laughs> sell him to someone else so just then tony comes in the door holding Singing. the saddest little bouquet of flowers i know where did he get those i don't know I found them in the yard <laughs> pick them out of uh mona's rose bushes or uh, flower beds again and he's singing a song. The lyrics are... It is, it's, it is this song because I just saw the last lyric he said. Yeah. And basically, it's um, a, a Dean Martin song, and it's called Houston. And um, yeah, I found a video of him performing it on some TV show or something. Nice. So I'm not sure he wrote it or anything, but uh, it is a Dean Martin. But it's funny that Tony's yeah. singing a Dean Martin song. And the lyrics are something like, from this old town, yeah, well, everybody's trying to put me down. Yeah, it's a this old town, everybody's in. trying to put me down. And then he says, I'm a face. And then he comes in and notice everybody. And the lyrics are, it's a lonesome in this whole town. Everybody's trying to put me down. I'm a face without a name, just walking in the rain. Oh. Going back to Houston, Houston, Houston. Oh. Feel free to go listen to it. <laughs> it's on YouTube. Yeah. Uh, and he sees that Mona and Samantha and Angela are all standing there looking at him right. expectantly. And as he's trying to put his little sad Pathetic bouquet flowers. of flowers into a face. Yeah. And he's like, What? And then Samantha says, Angela has something to sell you. I mean, tell you. All right. And she's like, okay, go ahead, Angela. Uh, and so a Angela's like, okay, you know, we thought that it might be a nice idea. It wouldn't be a terrible job thing if Sam took a modeling job. Mm. And Tony's like, you know how I feel about that. <laughs> yeah. And Angela's like, yes, she understands your concerns. And Samantha is ins insisting that there's nothing to be concerned about. But Angela's like, you know what? It would be we will be working together. It's going to be uh, sports equipment for a ski wear. She'll be covered in clothes from head to toe. <laughs> covered in clothes. <laughs> and Samantha's like, what more do you want? This is perfect, Dad. And then I will be able to make my own money, mm -hmm. you know, so that I won't have to be using yours as much. And then Your dog eats. I know outside. it's a dog party outside. I'm sorry, go ahead. Well, he's just saying, you know, he doesn't want her to, to go into this profession, but she's insisting it'll only be a one-time thing. Right. And then she's like, please, 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 please. And he says, I'll think about it. I'll have to think about it. And this yeah. is how, you know, Tony is truly a softie, because the rest of them are like... Right. He's going to yeah. say yes. Right, yeah. Was he says he'll think about it, and they're that like, that's it. That means you got it, it you Mona got it. says. Right. And yeah, then he get... says, it means I'll, I'll think, think about, about it. it. Right. And then, as he, again, as soon as he leaves the room, they're uh, they're like, "Oh yeah, yeah, we don't mean we don't mean to rush you. You know, you take your time." And then, as soon as he leaves, they're like, "You got it." Right. And it's then we softy. get that intro, that little transition music that we got, and it, it's and showing. Like, what is this video? I mean, these aren't. It's just the city. I know, but they're those cars are so old. <laughs> those are probably the. I mean, I this mean, is the eighties. This, this is a fifty-seven when... Chevy cab. <laughs> Mr. Come on, look at that. Oh, yeah, that is that true. Thing. This yeah, is like this old video stock is footage. definitely from the 70s. Now, granted, those cars would have been dri driving around. Right. This time, I mean, there people was, would still have. I know what a Honda 70s. looks like there in the 80s, and that wasn't there. <laughs> that is true. Those cars do look old. Who's driving a 57 <laughs> Chevy cab around the. Maybe, maybe. <laughs> maybe I'm wrong. All right. After all the old cars, we're now on the set of the commercial. <laughs> and yeah, we went to 1950 for a minute, yeah. and then. Now we're here. So there's like a lady walking around in a tennis outfit. Mm -hmm. Angela is in complete work mode. So I Tony's know. following her around and he's like, Angela, you know, t trying to talk to her. And then he's like, are you listening to me? And she's like, oh, of course. And then she looks behind him and she's like, we need more snow over here. So there's like a couple areas going on where they're going to be shooting. I'm sorry. I don't have this. Oh, okay. I was wondering why you were staring at my screen. No, I was watching to okay. see what was happening. I don't have it until this. <laughs> oh, I should have said it. something okay. to you. Oh, uh, so she says, Tony, calm down. As you can see, it's a perfectly wholesome environment filled with perfectly wholesome young people. And just then, Tawny walks by. Oh, I see why I was cut out. Oh, yes, in a very small bathing suit. 
And Angela says, some more perfect than others. Mm. And Tony's like, you know, she looks familiar. Oh, right. This is the girl that Jonathan has next to his bed. Oh, God. He says, Jonathan put a picture of her next to his bed. Oh. And Angela says, no, there's a picture of me next to his bed. And he says, not anymore. Well, and, and the thing is, that's an irritating because that's kind of crucial to... It builds up to what happens to Jonathan, at the end of the episode. I mean, not episode. crucial. Right. But poor Jonathan doesn't have much. No, so he really doesn't. They should have left I mean, that in in this in TV one. Yeah. They completely blew past all that. But do they have the part where he makes the phone call later? Yes. Okay, so that I think is more important, but and, this does build up, up to that. And whatever... Antenna TV has, that's what the um, daily, is it Daily Motion? Yeah. That's what Daily Motion has. Yeah. I'm learning. Some, it depends. Like some of the Daily Motion stuff, if it has Nick at night in the corner, will be longer cuts. Oh, I think this actually did because it was promoting oh, really? Fresh Prince in the corner. Oh, okay. Well, then for Nick at night, they probably cut this out because of the bathing suit lady. Oh, maybe. Because it was like but, more um, geared towards But so children. far, this is, has everything I think that... The anyway, Daily Motion. Yeah, yeah it just depends talk. on whatever copy the person had who but uploaded it. I just hate it. when they cut out things that actually make sense I know. to the story. Yes. But whatever. Tony says, oh, no, no, I'm sure. I dusted her. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so then uh, yeah. this guy, what is his name? He, The photographer calls Angela over because he wants her to look at something. Robert Briscoe Evans. He's, he's in a bunch of episodes. He is in a bunch of episodes. I noticed that tonight. Yes. Or I looked it up. Uh, hang on, let me find he's, him. I looked him up on the Intermovie movie, movie database. This is the first one. Yes. But then it says like he's an announcer. Yeah, Life with Father. He's a, he's voice. Mm -hmm. what, I don't Life's, know what that means. I don't know. Life's, maybe he's just like a, on the TV. I, ha, I honestly have no idea what Life with Father is. Yeah, Life's I know he's an announcer. Is, he plays Bill. And then an episode called oh. Who's the Boss. There's one called Who's the Boss, he's right? I remember that. Yeah. I mean, I remember reading that earlier tonight. Yeah, I forgot about that. that yeah, I wanted what to bring is this it up. lifeless father? Oh, uh, Tony wisely forbids Sam to drive to Bonnie's parents' cabin. Mm. It's a clip show. That's probably why I don't remember it that well. Okay. Uh, uh, so he wants, he's calling Angela over to look at something. I don't know okay. what to look at what. It's just that lady in the bathing suit and some other yeah. person standing there. Whatever. And she says, it's so hard to be indispensable. And so she walks away. Sam comes out dressed all up in her little ski outfit. Oh, yeah, that's where mine picks up. Okay, yeah. So she looks adorable. She has on a big puffy jacket, mittens, a cat. Like, she couldn't have more clothing on. I know. In comparison to the lady who just walked by in a bathing suit. But Tony finds something wrong with it. He says, Sam, I think you got a little too much lip gloss. Hmm. So he runs over and gets a tissue, and then he tells her to blot, and he shows her how to blot, too. He puts it between his lips. I know. <laughs> Then he puts it between her lips, and she he blots some of the lip gloss off. Then do you notice he does this little hacky sack trick with the tissue? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> and then catches it. So Tony. So Tony Danza, right? Yeah. I mean, that was I guess. Tony Danza I don't know. showing off there. Good, yeah, that's true. Yes. He, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. You're right. Good thing he got it, too, or that would have messed up a take no, for no reason. I bet you if he didn't get it, they would have just done it over again until <laughs> he did. Yeah. So uh, he gives her a big hug and he's like, okay, go get him. So Angela comes over and she's like, you look fabulous. Are you ready to go in front of the camera? And Tony says, don't pressure her. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Getting all Papa Bear again. And he sa tells Sam, if you're having second thoughts, we'll walk right out of here. She's like, no, I'm fine. I'm a little nervous, but I'm fine. But I can do this. Yes. And Angela's like, a little nervousness is great. It gets the adrenaline going. So they say, all right, let's get the show on the road. So she goes up there. Now, they have like what looks like a glamour shot set set up here. Like, I don't <laughs> understand the background of this at all. And there is like a lady with a tennis outfit on, a tennis racket, a guy pretending to be a golfer. Sam's in her little ski outfit. There's a volleyball player behind her and then Tawny in the bathing suit. Yeah, which I didn't even notice. And when I first watched really? it, that there was somebody in the bathing suit in the back. Really? You didn't notice I Tony? watched it on a, oh, a little tiny TV. <laughs> well, a little screen on my computer. I shouldn't say it worked, but yeah. So worked. they want to do the group shots first. Why you would have all these people in a group shot, I don't know. That None of this makes any sense. But well, whatever. it's they're promoting a sports catalog that has everything. I guess so. Okay. So you got your yeah, skiing, yeah, that's true. you got that your makes bathing sense. suits, and okay. your golf clothes. 
So he's, they're like, all right, have Tennis. fun up there. Big smiles. And Sam's smiling really big. And then they're like, oh, okay, Sam, maybe not quite so big of a smile. Mm. And Tony's like, lay off her. And he gets all upset. <laughs> so they just need to kick Tony out of here. I was about to say, they should yeah. have not, never allow him in. <laughs> he's the worst stage dad ever. Should have had Angel just deal with it. Right, exactly. Like, she could have just stepped in as the guardian. But then you wouldn't have all this hilarity right now. Right. So they're like, okay, great now. And then Angela's getting in on it. Let me see your let me see your swing with the tennis racket and the golf club. Like I, I don't know that Angela would necessarily be doing this and it no. would probably be the photographer, but again, whatever. Right. So now the photographer wants the guy who's dressed up in the golf clothes to get closer to Sam. And he's like, Okay, a little closer, a little closer. Which doesn't make any sense. <laughs> no. <laughs> and Tony's like, Hey, that, that, that's close enough. So that he's really getting upset. And he's like, you know, this doesn't make sense. Like, why would you even have a golfer standing next to someone who's skiing? Right. <laughs> so Angela's like, sit down in this chair and shut your mouth. And he doesn't want to. And she's like, either that or you can wait outside. And then he's like, I'm sitting. Yeah. So he does. He you gotta like, down. You got to like that he respects Angela enough yeah. to sit and not fight <laughs> yeah. with her. And what is the like guy? a child. There's a guy behind him taking photos of something on the other side, but I don't know what oh, up. It's a work in studio. Yeah. They're just all over the place. I don't see anyone standing over there, though. Oh, well, whatever. <laughs> then the photographer is telling something to the lady who's in the tennis outfit. None of these people are listed except for Tawny. She is listed in the cast because she has a line later. Uh, but volleyball, tennis, and golf guy... They don't have lines, so they're not listed. Mm. So he tells... We'll never know what happened to them. No. He tells the lady who's dressed in the tennis outfit, you know, can you just be a little more like, a little more like Sam? So Sam is doing a great job. So some time has passed. The shoot's over, and Tony is still sitting in that same little director's <laughs> I know. That chair, made me laugh. All sad. Like, <laughs> and like, the, what happened? A guy comes out, and he's like, hey, buddy, come on. We're trying to clean up here. Right. And you get up. And Tony's like, oh, yeah, I'm sorry. Thanks. And he gets up. The guy takes a chair and like, you can tell this guy really, he really took his part seriously. Yeah, that was been, that was it for him. So he had to do it. Yeah. Do do it right. (laughs) And he was probably excited that he was get he was able to tell Tony Danza to get out of a chair. Okay. What is his name here? Patrick Kupo. He is stagehand. Oh, stagehand. Yeah. Yeah. Let me see if I recognize him from anything. Or whatever he says. Perfect. An episode of Perfect Strangers. Oh, okay. An episode of Columbo. I remember Perfect Strange. Yeah, a couple things. Oh, he's working now. Killer Popcorn completed. Kindred mm. post production 2021. Okay. I don't know what those are. But... Me either, but you know what? The guy's working. He's working. Yep. No, that's great. So Sam comes out with the photographer and she's like, Did I do okay? And he said, You were terrific. And she's like, Oh, it's great. Like, I really felt like it was right. And I'm so happy that this worked out. And she's like, I would love to do it again sometime. And the photographer says, well, any friend of Angela's is a friend of mine, so I'll give you a call. And he walks off. And so Sam's really excited that all this happened. And she's like, did you hear that? I did a good job. And he, the photographer comes back over and he says, you're a natural. You could really get a lot of work. And then he looks at Tony and says, as long as you stay home. <laughs> <laughs> they've all had it with tony. they really have <laughs> tony says i'm obviously a creative threat to that guy <laughs> creative threat so now angela walks in with the paychecks again a job i don't think angela would have but that's fine <laughs> yeah whatever she's got the paychecks and she says it's payday and she hands it to samantha and samantha says i can't believe that like this was so much fun and i'm actually getting paid for it as well so she opens up the envelope, looks at the check, and she says, whoa, I'm rich. She hands it to Tony, and Tony's like, you're not rich, but you are incredibly comfortable. Incredibly comfortable. So what do you think that check is? I'm thinking it's like $600. Yeah, maybe. Because she probably made like 125 an hour, and then taxes, who knows how many hours they yeah. were there. But that's what I'm, that's what I'm thinking Samantha Five, would think is Five, six hours there. Yeah. But $600 at that point would be like $1,200 today. Yeah. So that is pretty a good amount of money. Considering Tony makes 12000 a year, whatever we <laughs> figured out. <laughs> Maybe seventeen now after his last raise. That's true. So Samantha says, I think I just found my after-school job. And Tony's like, no, no, we discussed that this was a one-time thing. But she says, you know, can't this be just a couple-time thing? Because this was really easy money. And he's like, the next thing you know, you're going to be missing school. You're going to be wearing all kinds of gunk on your face. 
You'll be dating by coastal rock stars. <laughs> right, whatever that means. <laughs> yeah, he's spiraling. And then she's like, give me some credit. And then what does he say? He says, look, to tell you the truth, for me, I don't like the business. The fast buck, the fast life. And he does that little snap. <laughs> he does thing. his little snap. And little yep. fast buck, fast life. <laughs> it's a glamour trap, Sam. I know. But, if, but you think, if you think you know better and you're willing to go ahead, regardless of your father's advice, go for it. She's like, okay, thank yeah, you. Yeah, thanks. Cool. <laughs> thanks for your advice. See she ya. A she says, I forgot to give Mark my phone number. <laughs> and she runs after Mark, who's the photographer, to make sure he has her number. Because apparently the photographer sets up all the shoots. Right. It's exactly. not any kind of any. He wouldn't just show up, take yes. pictures and leave. Again, job he probably wouldn't have, but whatever. That's fine. Yep. Angela comes over to Tony and she says, wasn't this such a great day? Like everything went so well. I'm so happy. And Tony looks at her and says, this is all your fault. <laughs> <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> so now it's a couple of days later, I'm assuming. And we're yes. waiting for the paper to arrive because <laughs> they think that the ad will be in that issue of the paper. I actually got a kick out of the scene. Re oh, I don't remember. It's okay. classic Jonathan. Oh, oh okay. Sorry, Hang on. I, I don't remember, but. Yeah, would you like we'll to me to tell you what happens? Jonathan's outside, and oh, then yes. he, and then he <laughs> yells, now. he yells that he's wait something about the papers here, or he said first he says that he's waiting for the paper, and all of a sudden you hear it, right? Like the paper fly in. the paper's coming. He says, and then you're thud, and you're owl, <laughs> and then he walks in rubbing his head and says the paper's here. Very Jonathan. <laughs> But like, uh, why is he? I mean, I guess he's outside waiting for the paper because of the ad. Yeah, because you know. the do yeah. So they're all excited that this paper is going to have the advertisement in it. Look at um, Samantha's little nightgown; it's super cute. She looks like Wendy from Peter Pan in this. She's they're all show. in their pajamas. It's yeah. great. They all woke up to get the paper yeah, thrown, so it is very thrown at Jonathan. And Mona is very upset about it. She's angry that she's up so early. She wants to know why. And Angela's like, well, you know, first we have to get the paper, but you also have a job. Like, you're going to work today. Right. So, yeah. So, Jonathan gets hit in the head with the paper. <laughs> <laughs> he brings Poor it Jonathan. inside, and they all gather around on the writing desk. That's a very nice robe that Angela has on, too. I know. Everybody gets nice sleeping clothes. Yes. But it's like everybody got a new fancy outfit for this scene. So, yes. Yeah, so they open up the paper, and there right. she is. First, right. Jonathan doesn't see her, but then she's like, I'm right there. I'm shushing. Right. And they're like, oh, you look beautiful. So they're all very excited for uh, Samantha. Right. But what does Jonathan say? There's Tawny. <laughs> right. And yeah. then they all give him a look, and then he right. leaves. He's like, I'm going to leave. He said, now there's a man's woman. Uh. And he goes running away because mm. they all give him a dirty look. Now, Tony comes down the stairs. Tony's already dressed, so he's probably gone That's for hilarious. a seven-mile run. That's hilarious. Everybody just woke up. Right. <laughs> and they're, then they're but he's ready to go. Yeah, he's probably already run and come home. And it's kind of similar to how Saturdays are around here. That is a good point I, go, I get up i go to the gym and i come back everybody's still asleep yeah yeah good for you good I'm for just, you going to the gym i'm, I'm gonna like sleep. tony yeah <laughs> no i'm not so he comes down the stairs and not he's at like, all what is all the commotion so they show him the paper and he's like oh you make such a beautiful snow bunny so now angela's like all right come on mother excitement's over let's get ready to go to work and she's like no you know what i'm going back to bed Getting up to get the paper really took it out of Mona. Yeah, why didn't Mona get up then to get the paper? Yeah. And Angela says, you're fired. And Mona says, I don't care. I don't care. care. <laughs> of course she doesn't care. Right. So then... She's going to get food and right, she's, everything exactly. anyway. Her life is not going to change and she isn't really going to get fired. So right. there's no repercussions for Mona going back yeah. to bed. And I do like Tony's wearing a polo shirt, but sweatpants and the polo shirt's tucked, tucked in. Tucked in. I know. That's why I think What's he happening? was running or he's going out running because... That's true. Maybe that's what he sleeps in. No, he sleeps in that little white tank top. In oh, the... yeah, that's right. I, I, wa I pay attention. That's true. <laughs> so Tony comes over and sits down on the couch with Sam, and he's like, why don't we cut that out so we can save it, and you can show your grandkids that you modeled once. And Sam's like, oh, I'll model again. He's like, you know, the photographer said he was going to call, but it's been a week, and he hasn't called. Oh, so, so there you go. Time has passed. It's been a week. Oh, okay, yes. And so he's like, you know, this business, it's fraught with disappointment and heartache, and I just don't want you to get upset. Sam insists that he will call, and Tony's like, maybe he will, maybe he won't. 
But until then, I thought that I would raise your allowance. Oh, boy. He said, it costs more to be a teenager now than it did in the 60s. 60s. <laughs> Not the 50s. So he says, I was thinking five bucks a week, retroactive for a whole month. So he hands her a 20, I'm assuming. She's like, wow, an extra $5 a week. Thank you so much. And she gives him a big hug. Then she says, I still don't understand why he hasn't called. And right then, Jonathan walks in and he says, uh-oh. Oh, Oh boy. Yeah. And she's like, what do you mean, uh uh-oh? Jonathan says, Mark called last night. He wants you at the studio at 4 o'clock on Saturday. So luckily, she has enough time that she didn't miss this. (laughs) So she's excited and not completely pissed off. I know. Jonathan gets the worst lines. He just They make him come in and, and do dumb things. and then Although, I will say that I like the Tawny storyline here. It, I know it's pretty too, funny. But so far in this, uh, the last couple of minutes, he's gotten hit in the head with a newspaper. <laughs> right. And he forgot to give uh, <laughs> Sam Samantha a message. <laughs> so she's like, oh, I'm so excited. But he so does ask excited. for the money. I'm so glad that he called. Okay, I got to go call Mark. Dad, you can keep this. And she hands him back the 20. She says, right. I don't need it now. And she goes running off to call mom. Right. So Tony's just sorry. Stand- at that point, that's where. Right. Tony's just standing there sadly looking at his 20. And Jonathan walks over and says. But I, I could use it. Yeah. <laughs> he, Jonathan, tried, he tried. And then he I, runs he, up the He's a hustler. I will give him that. I know. He's always looking for yeah, money. Right. So Tony like yells at him. Well, not yells at him. But gives him a look. And he goes running upstairs. So now we're. It's. Uh, is, wait, is this the same on, outfit he's I, wearing that day? No, because he's in pajamas. Oh, right. He is still in pajamas there. So in this the morning. is maybe later that day. Well, Jonathan, they, you should know it's later in the day because of the transition. Right, because... Where of they the, show the front of the house and they right, play music. And they that's zoom in know. to the living room windows. Right, that's which where is Jonathan where the, all the action happens. Yeah. So Jonathan is sitting now at the same writing desk that Samantha was sitting at on the phone when she was looking for a job. And he's on the phone also, and he says, his, in the deepest voice he can muster, <laughs> this is Jonathan Bauer, the Bauer Agency. I know, it's funny. And he's like, I would like to meet with one of your models. So he's trying to talk to Tawny. With an eye. Tawny with an eye. And then Angela comes in. Oh, look, Angela's got flowers now. Lots of flowers yeah, in this episode, yeah. too. Looks like she picked them, Yeah, too. she was like, out. okay, you're te- okay, hang on here. What? So this must be Saturday at 4. You're telling me... That Angela's just hanging out on the weekends out there gardening with with flowers. Yes. Okay. I don't, I don't know. I'm I just telling that you that because I, I don't know either. I don't. Maybe. I don't know any better. I feel like Angela would not have a green thumb at all. And she's got gloves. She does. So maybe I mean, she, she can was go just... cut some roses. Come on. Daffodils. Yeah, maybe that's Whatever. what she was doing. <laughs> just cutting some daffodils. Okay. So she comes into the kitchen. Tony's all depressed. Oh, I'm sorry. Before she gets to the kitchen, though, she comes in with the flowers. She sees Jonathan on the phone, and she's like, oh, are you calling a little friend? Because she's just excited that Jonathan may have a friend. Right. And he's like, oh. he's got a friend all right. Yeah. So she says, why don't you invite them over so you can play? Mm, and he's like, foreshadowing. Oh, okay. So now she goes into the kitchen with her daffodils, and she sees Tony's all sad, and she's like, you know, here are some daffodils to cheer you up. He's trying to sew something, and he keeps sticking his fingers. He's mending <laughs> some, clo- some clothes, and he keeps sticking himself with this uh, with the needle. Mm. So Angela's like, you know, I get that you're a little blue because Sam's at a model. Oh, yeah, so this is definitely a Saturday at 4, because now Sam's at another modeling job, and neither Tony nor Angela were invited to this one. <laughs> I guess that's, if she's, how old is she supposed to be? 15? 15, 16. Yeah. I think in the last episode she was 16. Okay. So then, she yeah. So it. she can go on the set by herself. Yeah, um, sure. And he says, you know, it's just that a kid Sam's age, she doesn't know how to handle all of this money. And Angela's like, don't worry about her. You know, she's got a, her feet are firmly planted on the ground. No oh boy. Yeah. She comes in the kitchen, the back door, and she says, major shopping spree. So he's like, wait a minute, I thought you went to work. She said, I did. It was great. And then we hit the retail trail. Oh, Oh, so maybe Mona went with her to the set. They were like, let's get the person who's going to cause the least amount of trouble. Except for Mona was probably trying to pick up some other guy models. And she says, you know, it's an amazing feeling to walk through Bloomingdale's and be able to buy anything you want. Oh, boy. Yeah. So now not only does she have the $600 or whatever she made on the first shoot, now she has more money that she's made on this second shoot. And she said, you know, I just want to sh- not... So, so you see that I'm not completely selfish. Like, here are some of the other things I got for the people I love. Oh, gifts. 
She got Angela her favorite perfume, Obsession. Obsession. Yeah. Is that Calvin Klein, right? Yes, I think so. Mona says, we wanted to get passion, but then, ah, mm-hmm. who are we kidding? Right. Thanks, Mother. Oh. <laughs> and Angela gives her a look. <laughs> and then Mona's like, I gotta go. Okay, but thanks, Sam, for the bath beads. I'll share them with someone I love. Mm, ugh. No, she won't. She'll share them with someone she kind of likes. Right. Which and is fine, too, but to let's, let's not be... Let's not overstate this. You can get a thing Although, of Calvin Klein obsession now for twenty five dollars at Walmart. Really? Yeah. I don't. I don't. I think I, I wore obsession for men. Really? At Probably. Some point. Yes. Ugh. CK one was a big was a popular one. I think yeah. that was a little later though. Yeah, it was after obsession. Yeah, I am not a fan of cologne. I know. Or That's perfume. why I haven't worn it in yeah. <laughs> seventeen years. <laughs> um, okay, so then. Sam says, you remember the sweater that you said that you would buy one day if it was ever on sale? And he's like, oh, it was on sale? And she's like, nah, but who needs a sale? So she got him a sweater that he wanted. Mm. And then Jonathan got nothing, by the way. (laughs) That's true. You're right. I remember now. Everybody got something with Jonathan. Yes, because she got stuff for the people she loved. And Jonathan is not one of them, I guess. That's all right. Then she's like, okay, and then for the working girl, I get a load of these. And she pulls out a different type of boot that are even fancier than the ones that she had originally purchased for $90. Oh, boy. Tony looks at the bottom of the shoe, and they're $300. Oh, my gosh. So in today's amount, those would be about $670. Yeah, come on. That's a day's work. That's all, Yeah, it's a lot of shoe for boots. Yeah. But uh, Sam's like, you know, well, she's just fi- figuring that she's uh, able to splurge on this stuff because now she has her own money. Mm. And Sam, uh, Tony says, listen, Sam, all this stuff has to go back. But she reminds him, well, you said when I made my own money someday that I could spend it the way I want. And this when is someday. I'm spending it the way I want. Right. And this is how I want to spend it. And he's like, well, how long do you think that this money is going to last? But Sam says there's plenty more where it came from because she has a big interview with a woman named Fran Fiedler. Oh, Fran Fiedler. Yes. Who is a modeling agent. Mm. And Tony's like, Fran Fiedler, it sounds like some sleazy 10 percenter. <laughs> a person who's, who's a human leech. And Angela's like, actually, she's really lovely. And she reps some of the top cover girls. And she's very reputable. So now Samantha's really excited about this meeting, and Tony is really not excited about this meeting, (laughs) and she leaves. Angela says, okay, she is getting a little carried away, and Tony is like, a little carried away, three three Christmases and three birthdays, and I still would not be able to afford those boots. Mm. He's kind of right, probably. (laughs) It's also a little sad, Tony. I know. And she's like, "That's, that's it. That's what's really bothering you. And he's like, please don't analyze me. But she says, you know, you, you're you upset because you're worried that she's going to be able to be financially independent. And then with that, she's not going to need you anymore. Mm, I don't know. <laughs> and I would not. I would be very happy about that. If your kids were financially. Yeah. If they start making money for themselves. I don't have to pay for things. Well, yes. But here's the weird thing. Okay. So, and this is a reality with probably Alyssa Milano and... Danny Pintaro and other child actors who are on a popular TV show. Yeah. You probably end up making more money than your parents do. Yeah. And so so. that is going to throw your balance off. And your parents have Mm. to really be in charge still. And even though they're not in charge of the money. Like, as we know throughout history, the people who have more money have more power. Yeah. And you have to keep that from happening in your own household when your kid happens to make more money than you do. Mo money, mo problems. (laughs) It's and true. like a lot of parents, um, when their kids, you know, really are on a show to the point where they can't work anymore. Because like if somebody like Danny Pintaro, that he needs someone on set with him yes. all the time. That's so true. So then the parents will usually, one parent will quit their job, become their kid's manager, and then take like a portion of the salary for their income. And then their job is to be with their kid on set of their job. Right. So yeah, that has to be like a weird balance of power. But also, I think Tony should have maybe gone into this with a, okay, you're putting 80% of this in a, an account for college, and then you can have 20% to do whatever you want with. Okay. Instead of letting her just run with all the money, which is another reason for kids who act, and especially kids who are on like SAG 
projects, you have to put money in a Coogan account. Yeah, the Coogan account. Yeah, right. but that yeah. was because okay. some little girl's parents stole all of her money, which some is really terrible. Some little girl named terrible. Coogan. Really? That's is that was that her that's last name? That's the name. Yeah, yeah. Her, the last name is Coogan. Yeah, and that's the parents terrible. took all the money and they spent it. Yeah, that's awful. So yeah, yeah so they they try to set it up so that the kids are able to save money. Okay. Anyway, he says, you know. I'm fine with my daughter's financial independence. I just didn't think that it would happen at 15. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, so, oh, did I miss the part where he says he's going to darn? Uh, yes. I think I did. We did yeah. pass that part. But, yeah, when he oh, was getting irritated with Angela about her trying to analyze we got, him. We got so wrapped up in that. He said that he's going to darn, and we so didn't know what alone. that was. So we looked it up, and it is a sewing term. It is. I looked it up. It says uh, to mend, uh, mend a hole in knitted material. By interweaving yarn with a needle. And the um, quote that it says here is, I don't expect you to darn my socks. <laughs> and then it says, a place in the garment that has been darned. Mm. A sweater with darns in the elbow. <laughs> I've never so, heard of this. Because I'm now, these days... I thought days, darn was like, darn. We just buy a new sweater instead of mending so. stuff, yeah, I guess. We, we don't darn things. No, I would have no idea how to darn. So I can barely use the sewing machine. She says, you know what? You're just going to keep doing what you've always been doing. And he says, freaking out. And she says, no, that you, you've done a wonderful job raising this little girl. And she's going to shake you up every once in a while. But in the end, she will do the right thing. So you just need to hang in there. Yeah. Right. This is really sweet. Yeah. You know, she's giving him a sure. little pep talk. <laughs> and she says, you just need to keep your equilibrium. And he asks if he can get that over the counter. Mm-hmm. Yeah, sounds like it does sound like a drug. It does. It does sound, yeah. May cause uh, all of these side effects. So now, <laughs> a day or two later, this is a very Three's Company move right here. A day or two later, Sam is in the kitchen on the phone. So Tony is in the living room listening at the kitchen door. Mona, there's like some goofy music playing, and Mona sneaks in. She tiptoes over to Tony, and then she tickles him, and he falls over very Jack Tripper. Tripper -esque. It does. It is. It you're, is you're right. It's a very it's a Three's Company kind of, of move. Yeah, 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 yeah. So he says, what are you doing? He said, I'm eavesdropping. And Mona asks, is it Angela or something juicy? Uh -huh. Poor. <laughs> Gosh. <laughs> so Tony says that he's trying to listen to Sam's conversation with Fran Fiedler, who is the agent that she went to go see the other day. Right. So then Mona's like, get out of my way. Let me listen. So she pushes him. Why is Mona being so aggressive? <laughs> and she puts her ear at the door instead. And she says, I, I can't hear anything. <laughs> and then Tony says, I didn't say it worked. <laughs> Very <laughs> whack, pretty, wacky sitcom. <laughs> no, that's pretty funny, though. Then she's and then like, you, oh, they I hear noises and they kind of, again, in very wacky sitcom style they bump into right, right. each other yes. trying to run back to the couch <laughs> right. to sit, sit. To act they want like to get in nobody the chair was listening and the, and the couch and sit and then they just fall all over the place which is funny now meanwhile if anyone was talking on the other side of that door you absolutely would be able to hear oh my it. gosh yeah it's just yeah. a little flapping door <laughs> right. whatever that is i don't know what style of door that is uh swinging door swinging right door. He'll go. <laughs> wow i thought it was like I don't know. I mean, Something I don't know. Is there a fancy that? No, name? that's probably it. Just a swinging, a swinging door. door. I was I wanted a swinging kind of door as a kid like... because it seemed like a lot of fun. It probably uh, isn't. And now everything No, has... it's probably a pain in the ass because yeah. you're just going in and out of a door. with. Now yeah. everything's open floor yeah, plan. Back then, you, everything was shut. <laughs> you were shut down. You were shut in that kitchen. Yeah. You couldn't see what the hell was and going on. And it was on. probably great. I would, I know. I'd actually like a closed off kitchen. I, know. I might think, think about putting doors in our kitchen. <laughs> okay. So Tony sitting on the chair says, oh, hi, honey, what's new? And Sam says, oh, I was just talking to Fran Fiedler. And he's like, oh, that's great. What did she have to say? Sam says, she says, I have a lot of good qualities. Um, he's like, well, I could have told you that. <laughs> then Mona's like, see, there was no reason to eavesdrop. So now she just got Tony in trouble. Yeah. And he's like, okay, well, tell me some more about these good qualities. She said that Fran told her she had striking features, good mm -hmm. bone structure, and well-placed eyes. Tony says... Where else are they going to be? <laughs> yeah. Where else are you going to put them? Where else are you going to put them? Huh? <laughs> she said that Sam, Sam has the kind of charisma and presence that they look for. And, um, and he's like, okay, well, he says that's wonderful. But then she says, she also said, I have limited potential. Mm. I'm not tall enough. No. Oh. And I'm not special enough. Oh, that, why would you say that? 
Because she's a modeling agent. And but special enough. I know, yes. I'm she <laughs> That's but terrible. I really feel like this is this is probably what happens. Like anyone who's not five nine that even tries to be because like at this point she's done print stuff. And it's silly that she's just gonna kinda stop here because she could probably continue to do print stuff without any issue. But it seems like Fran covers more of like the runway model type uh, of stuff. All right. And it seems like that's probably pretty terrible. And they just would be like, Yeah, you're you're not tall enough and you know, you don't have a unique look, so they don't wanna bring you on. I read a lot with uh, Katrina Balf. She is the actress who plays Claire Frazier on Outlander. Mm -hmm. But she has said a lot about how, like, you know, I mean, if you see pictures of her when she used to model, she weighed nothing. She was, like, living on vegetable soup. And she said she'd go in for fittings and have people just tell her she was fat. Oh, God. So it's a really rough, it's not a good atmosphere for a teenager at all and probably even an adult. Um, so I don't know if it's gonna if it's changing now. I mean, I know now there's a more of a push to have like an array of women that look like actual a good representation of women. Yeah, you know, right. a diverse representation of women. But as far as runways, I don't really know how much that's changed. So uh, now Tony's angry and he's like, you know what? You are definitely special enough. You're tall enough, and you've got potential coming out of your ears. So he's on her side. He's like, you know, if you want this, then we'll find someone else. There's other people out there. It's not all Fran Fiedler. We can look for a different agent. You know, you don't let her knock you out of the batter's box. Mm. And Sam's like, Dad, this isn't baseball. And he says, everything is baseball. <laughs> I love that line, actually. <laughs> he says, the only way to win the game is to stay in there. So now he's like ready to champion for her because yeah. uh, somebody turned her down. And she's like, you know what? I don't know that I really want to work at this anymore like who needs the pressure and he's like really and she's like sure she's like i'm only 15 i don't need a career Mm -hmm. and i don't even need the money if you're still willing to give me that five bump a week raise yeah she's (laughs) out on this uh modeling thing right yeah but she probably got herself a steam kick down quite a bit and i remember watching this episode being like if Alyssa Milano isn't pretty enough for something, yeah, then nobody then is. Nobody is. I, know. I probably thought the same thing. <laughs> no. Like, it, it is kind of. But the other thing, too, is like, why is it all or nothing? Again, just like the ballet, like, you're not going to become a prima ballerina, so she just completely stops ballet. Well, a lot of things get wrapped up in 24 minutes. Exactly. But she probably still could have done some print work, put some money away in a savings account, and not mm-hmm. had to work at a movie theater. Yeah, like, well, come on, everybody, it let's is calm what it down. Is. <laughs> so he says he he starts frisking himself looking for that twenty dollar bill and he finds it and he gives it to her and she says you know you're such a rock I go through all this crazy stuff and you don't waver like you're always so strong and level headed and you're there really mm, I don't know about that level headed did anybody he, see the beginning of this episode <laughs> I guess he did a good job hiding his craziness in this one she asks asks him how do you do it he says equilibrium. Hmm. He doesn't know. No. <laughs> then he gives her a big hug and he stares up at the sky, or I'm guessing God, and kind of does like Something. a little thank you. Yeah. So now on the tag, Tony is standing in front of the mirror and he's looking at his own earlobes. Oh, I, we missed that part. Oh. At some uh... point, Sam also said that the lady told her that she would never be able to do earring work because she had uneven earlobes. Oh, right. So but now, what, oh yeah. what, wait, what, where are we now? <laughs> this is the tag of the episode. I know that, but you, um, you don't have Tony looking in the mirror. No, in his no, that's why I'm confused. Really? I'm literally. I, the next thing I have is, uh, is Tawny coming to the door. Oh, okay. So before that, on my version, which is the Roku channel version, yeah. Tony's now looking at himself in the mirror. Oh, yeah, I don't have this at all. And he's measuring his earlobes to see if they're even, because he wants to know if he's got uneven earlobes, too. Oh, this is all cut out of mine. Then he says to Angela, hey, Angela, tell me honestly, what do you think of my lobes? (laughs) And she's reading a book on the couch. She comes over, she looks at them, and she goes, I think they're uneven, but in a rakish kind of way. Oh, okay, well. Yes. And he's like, oh, I've got rakish lobes. I've got so rakish he's very lobes. excited about that. Yeah, rakish I don't have any of that. Rakish is just like an old word for like dashing or 
Um, in romance novels, it's usually dis- used to describe the male hero of the book who uh. likes to sleep around with a lot of women and is considered a rake, but then really isn't and falls in love with the the heroine wow, I know of the story. A lot about that. Yes, it's like a romance trope. Okay. Um, yes. So, yeah, what I have is it fades up from black and he's opening the door. Oh, okay. Yeah, so then the doorbell rings. He opens the door. And it's Tawny. Yeah, and with Tawny, an eye. Tawny looks at Tony and is like, Jonathan Bauer? Yeah, she's, <laughs> she's probably hoping that was Jonathan Bauer. <laughs> and Angela says, Tawny, what are you doing here? And Tony's like, uh, I bet I know <laughs> what's oh, no. going on here. So he yells up the stairs and says, Jonathan, there's someone here to see you. <laughs> Jonathan comes down the stairs, sees this beautiful woman standing there, and he's like, Tawny! And then he turns around and starts running up the stairs. But what did he think was going to happen? He I don't know. Her Maybe over. he didn't think she was going to show. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's pretty funny, yeah. actually. And he goes running away, tripping over himself as he goes up the stairs. Yep. And Tawny and thinks it. it's pretty funny, too. What do you want to bet that Tawny ended up going out with Tony? Yeah, well, yeah. Something happened. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Maybe in the back of the van. <laughs> the blue van. <laughs> hey, Tony, let me show you around the van. <laughs> and that is the end of the episode. Sorry, no, except that part about t- Tawny and Tony in the van did not happen. <laughs> Okay, so um, who went first with rating last? We should know this because it was just last night. I know. We've been actually knocking these out. Um, I think you went first. Yeah, because you went first with the boss. So you go first with rating this time. Okay. Yeah, I think you're right. Yes, you're actually right. Because I was stressed about going first with the boss. So I do remember not doing that last night. Um, rating, I actually enjoy this episode. Yeah. I mean, I say that as if I don't enjoy the majority <laughs> right. of them. Yeah. But I mean, I know it's up and down. But we, um, And we've been in a little bit of a lull here. There were a few episodes so. that we, we struggled through recently. I think the last one. No, no, we like the last one. Right. We like the last couple, but like the Dream Tones, oh, we struggled. God, yeah, and the was, one before uh, that, I think we struggled. Yes. So. And anyone who, who wrote those episodes, I'm very sorry if you're listening. <laughs> but um, this one, I... I, I give this a solid seven and a half wow nice no? yeah i gave it a seven but that's oh, okay. fine all right i give it a seven and a half um i liked it i liked the little jonathan parts i thought they were cute and mm-hmm. funny um and um and you know mona had her moments in there again we learned that mona is no help in any situation all and only hurts <laughs> in all the situations when she's encouraging Sam's shopping habits and talking about climaxes. <laughs> she's really useless, but in an entertaining way. Exactly, yeah. Um, and annoying to Angela when she's, I'm going to go back to bed instead of get ready for work. Right, yeah. Like, really acts like a, 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 a child. third child. Yeah, pretty much. Um, and again, like I said, Jonathan's parts are really funny. Um, I mean, whatever, like this whole like modeling thing and then it's all wrapped up in all one episode and whatever. I mean, that's just, TV. Yep. That's just That's sitcom. How it works. That's an 80s sitcom for yeah. you. Um, and the way Tony acted in the episode is kind of funny, like the overbearing dad and at the at the yeah. shoot and everything. But anyway, yeah. So seven and a half. All right. Yeah, I gave it a seven. I also really like this episode. Um, I thought it was sweet at the beginning. How Angela was like saying, you know, your father and I discussed it. We decided oh, right. it was yep. very parenting esque. Um, Angela was very sweet with Tony when she was like, you know, the reason why you're upset is because you're worried she's going to make more money than you. Uh, and then, yes, the Jonathan parts were very cute. I remember as a kid really enjoying this episode because it was mostly about Samantha. And yeah. Oh, right. Well, that makes sense. Um, yeah. So nice. And okay. I like Jonathan getting hit in the face with the paper. <laughs> oh, poor Jonathan. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Who's the boss around here, me or my mother? Or maybe it's you. I chose Samantha as the boss. Oh, really? Yes. Oh, interesting. Is this the second episode I've done that? No. I don't know. Um, I don't, don't ask me. <laughs> I don't remember the last episode we did already. But yeah, because she, you know, she kind of got Angela to talk to him about this to see if he would let her do it. Okay. She really pushed him like I want to do this again. We're going to do this again. Then she pushed for the interview with the lady, and then she decided, you know what? Actually, this isn't for me. So okay. even though Tony was freaking out on the sidelines, she was really making all the decisions throughout the episode. 
All right. Yeah, you really sell it, actually. And I feel kind of stupid <laughs> no. picking Tony. But I picked Tony, even though he was kind of a bumbling idiot through most of it. But No, but I mean, like, he still, like, tried to keep it together, but didn't do a very good job of it. But um, He was the boss of himself. I think he did a pretty I good guess job so. of keeping him. Yeah, yeah, and at the end, he still, like, like, you know, was supportive of her. And Yeah. I, yeah, you're right. God, it is Samantha. It was right in front of me, and I didn't even pick <laughs> pick it i picked i picked tony okay, <laughs> I, but- I almost lied and just said that i picked samantha <laughs> but i thought that I, wouldn't be nice. i appreciate your honesty yeah okay you tony. can reach us at who's the boss podcast on instagram who's the boss pod one on twitter really don't bother going over there or on facebook the who's the boss podcast page or you can go to anchor.fm slash wtb podcast and there you could leave us a voice message Okay, so the next episode we're going to cover, oh boy. Okay, what? it's Marry Me Mona. Oh, so Leslie Nielsen Leslie comes Nielsen back. is back. Okay. So we've had no mention of Max for the past seven episodes. I know, and, uh, and apparently, you know, apparently there's going to be a wedding. Way around town and, but... <laughs> yeah. and now there's going to be a wedding. So, okay. And now there's going to be a wedding. Stay tuned for that. All right, bye everyone. Bye. If you like this podcast, please subscribe and give a big thumbs up. And tell all your friends. And maybe you can tell your grandma, your mother, and y- your sister or brother. Maybe you have no siblings. Tell your dog and cats. Bye.